Have you ever wondered how to improve your music production ability as fast as you possibly can? Well, my name's Dan Ruff from Inverse Audio and I'm gonna show you how. If you enjoy the video, leave a like and comment down below what you'd like to see next. Um, and without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Gotta have some really strong coffee first. Oh, it's disgusting. Motivation and inspiration. Maintaining motivation and inspiration is paramount to the creative process. Whether you're creating a track in a matter of hours or days, your motivation and creativity can influence the outcome significantly. Interruptions or leaving a track unfinished can break the flow of creativity. This could be some notification that leads you to doom scrolling for the next 30 minutes or a chore that you forgot to do earlier. These distractions are usually fine, but it can massively impact your flow work state. This leads me to another point, is finishing your tracks. I know this can be a really hard one. If you're finding a track hard to finish, it may be down to burnout or just pure boredom. These are common problems and you can take a break, but make sure you return to the same track so you actually finish it in the end. But this can significantly increase the amount of tracks you put out per week or perhaps per month, depending on how many tracks you make. Similarly, if you're lacking inspiration, taking a break, perhaps going for a walk, even making another tea, I'm probably on my fifth today. All of these things can massively impact how you feel when you're making a track. It's really key to source inspiration from things you really like or perhaps things that you need to like. These can be tutorials or music that you really enjoy, music that you're inspired by, um, even just sitting down with Spotify with your headphones on for like half an hour, maybe even 10 minutes, and just breaking down how you really think an artist has done something specific that you really like. Whether it's a bass in a song, synthesis or just a mix that tends to be something i do a lot um it might be really useful to go and check out tidal <laughs> this is not sponsored um as spotify usually plays tracks in mp3 format um but tidal has wav or flac can't remember which one of the two back to tutorials although this could be a bias point i genuinely think you can get so much insight and valuable information from whatever you're interested in um if you want to follow an artist tutorial or just a general production tutorial, I would definitely recommend them. Producers like myself that I've been producing for a few years now must definitely have started with tutorials. I definitely did, cramming as much information as I possibly can into my brain, watching everything I possibly could, picking up little techniques that you can find in every single video. Everyone has different production styles, so it definitely helps from watching as many as possible, seeing how people produce in different ways and taking that all into your own productions trying not to copy but trying to just use little techniques my favorite quote from this topic is if you've got a dream when you have a dream you've got to grab it and never let it go hope that sounded really inspirational <laughs> i definitely i think what it means is no matter how motivated you're feeling besides of that fact you have to constantly work as hard as you can all the time the amount of tens of thousands of hours i put into fl studio are ridiculous but it has been worth every second of it because it's something I love and enjoy, and now I feel like I've progressed significantly. Even over the past three months or so, um, you reach markers that you can really recognize if you look back at your old work. Um, think about how far you'll be in the next two years as well. That's a big one because no one really learns how to produce in a year. Um, but trying to fit it in when you possibly can uh, in your free time, or maybe it is your only free time, um, which is fine. Just make sure you're producing every day. Um, on to the next point, let's go. My second point is being surrounded by better musicians. In a way, I'm linking motivation back to this point, as being surrounded by a good bunch of producers can really help speed up your production process. Just having people to bounce ideas off or sitting in a Discord call with for a few hours can be really beneficial in so many ways. I'll drop the link down to Inverse Audio Discord uh, down below in the description if you want to check it out. There's some great producers in there as well as me and 5X that you can ask anything or come and watch us produce, we'll watch you produce. Um, but yeah, it's just a really good community to learn. But yeah, I'll see you there. Watching other producers better than yourself produce a song can be really frustrating. However, there's so many different ways you can learn from them. This really helps as all these producers have different ways of working and different workflows. So you can take little parts from each one and kind of develop your own ability, especially if these producers are better than you and have things that perhaps you didn't know before, um, or maybe even shortcuts on the door that you use. Like for me example, FL Studio, the majority of the shortcuts I know now and ways around it is learned from other producers that are better than myself. Especially when starting out, I would say this is probably one of the best things you could possibly do. Having people you can talk to is such a motivational thing, especially when you all have the same target goal. 
It's also great to have other producers to ask what steps you should take to further your production skill. The amount of motivation you also get from this is incredible, as without the people I'm surrounded by now, I doubt I would have made it this far. My third point is being prepared. This is one of the easiest ways to improve your production standard. Whether it's having a door template or knowing your plugins inside and out, these things can definitely help speed up the process. Taking the short amount of time it takes to make a door template can really help. Templates are a really good way to build habits and keep your projects really organized, as this can help further down the line when it comes to mixing and keeping everything together. Knowing exactly what insert your bass is on can be really helpful, so you can just go straight to the mixer channel and start adding effects right away. You can make your own template or you can head over to Inverse Audio where you can grab your own now. This is FL Studio, but this comes with all the buses and all the inserts perfectly labeled and organized. This is the template we use in all of our videos and is perfect for your mixing needs. Knowing what plugins to use and how to use them really well is essential in your process. As beginners, a lot of us go and download and buy as many plugins as we possibly can, as we think it's a great way to accelerate the process of learning how to become a producer. But in my experience, I think it's best to have a few good plugins that you really know well inside and out. This selection will change over your journey. However, having ones that you would instantly go to helps speed up the process and also makes your mixing far more precise. One of my favorites is Pro Q3, a great EQ that you can use as it's really specific and it lets you solo out certain bands so you can hear exactly where the frequencies are that you want to remove. I have so many hours using this plugin and I know it inside and out. It's perfect to have this level of understanding of your plugins just so you know how to use them perfectly. My other favorites are Pro C for compression and Decapitator for distortion. These are some plugins that I think are really simple in the way they work, however they have great results. Part of the preparing process can also be what you do in the morning before you start producing or in the afternoon perhaps. I think it's always really good to start fresh minded. Maybe it's going for a walk like I've said earlier. Or maybe just making your room tidy, which I can't honestly speak about right now because mine is a state, but I won't show you that. I think it's good to have a good working environment from the get go. As you can see, my desk is also not as clean as it also helps with your mindset, which is why bigger producers have their own studios that separates their work and their life because they come into the room with a good state of mind uh, and can get along with their work. My last point is experimenting. Making one genre can often become really boring and mind numbing. To avoid this, I'll quite often jump to another genre like UKG or maybe even make a trap beat. In fact, for the first three years, I actually spent the majority of my time making trap beats before I then decided to branch out and now I make drum and bass. The amount of hours I spent making beats is ridiculous. However, it doesn't even correlate to the amount of time I spend now on FL Studio. After finding my passion for drum and bass about two years ago, I have spent so many hours on FL Studio. It feels like my dedication to music has just risen above levels that I thought I couldn't have even had. As it goes, everyone will have their favourite genre and it's awesome to stick to that like I am doing now. People might not know what their favourite genre is, but looking back at it, I made trap beats and I thought that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And I now much prefer making electronic music. I would never have known that if I'd never experimented and I probably would have given up along my journey at some point. This shows that especially at the beginning of your journey, you should definitely experiment with as many genres as you possibly can. However, who am I to tell you not to stick to multiple genres as that is a sick way to do it as well. Another positive of experimenting is trying new things that you've never done before. Whether this is a production technique or another genre like I've said before, all new information learned from these two things can be brought back into what you originally make and this can help massively. Whether it's a side chaining technique that you've just learned from UK Garage or perhaps some samples that you've used from a trap beat, when you go back to making an original genre you can incorporate these two new things back into your tracks that you make. Anyway guys, I hope these tips have been really useful and you've learned something from this video, that's the most important thing. And if you'd like to see more of these short form documentaries, make sure to leave some comments down below and tell us what you'd like to see. We're also now offering mastering and mixing sessions, so make sure you go and check that out at inverseaudio.co.uk. Anyway, I'll catch you soon guys, this has been Denver and thanks for watching.